Hey dudes, welcome to Splat from the Past, the only 80s themed horror and sci-fi show where things can get totally radical. Now today, I will be interviewing a legendary child actress, the queen of the short-lived TV series, and that is Tammy Lauren. All you horror fans out there may remember her, though, best from Wishmaster, that classic 90s horror movie, and I'll be interviewing her today. I want to talk to her, though, about all those short-lived series. She did so many of them. I just picked the, the most <clears throat> ones that, the ones that I'm the most curious about. You know, I want to find out, you know, what, why she thinks that the ser- uh, she was on so many of those failed series. You know, I don't think any other actor has been on short-lived series other than Robert Urich. Probably she comes in second, certainly. And, yeah, talk about a couple other roles that she did and stuff. And um, I would also like to say Happy Mother's Day to all of you out there who have your moms. Cherish your mothers, hold on to them, and love them because they gave you life. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love you. And so uh, I'm waiting for Tammy to call me so we can get the interview on the road here. So, yeah, my interview with Tammy Lauren should be up in just a moment. Hi, Tammy. Hi, Tommy. How are you? I am just ecstatic. How are you? I am good. I'm not ecstatic, but I'm I'm doing decent. I would say that for sure. (laughs) That is great. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. To me, you're like the the queen of of the failed TV series, and it's not even your fault. <laughs> <laughs> I want it on my grave. That is awesome, Tommy. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I don't I don't think anybody else has had that title other than Robert Urich. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Robert, no, it's, it's true. Ah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> growing up watching you with your various hairstyles, it, this is just so <laughs> awesome. <laughs> well, good. Thank you. I'm happy to do this. My pleasure. And you're my 90th interview. I'm 90? Yep. That's awesome. <laughs> so did you get into acting because your parents were in the business? No, they weren't in the industry at all. No, it started because my dad wanted me to go to, I I think he was thinking it was going to be like a modeling school, but it was actually like this little acting sort of class for commercials and whatnot in, in, uh, but it was adjunct to the theater. And then they had me audition for this play down there and I got this play and my parents went, oh, we should get her an agent. So they got me an agent. Nice, nice. Well, you were certainly adorable for it. Um, Thank you. (laughs) Were you you a tomboy growing up? I so much was. I so was. And it's almost, I mean, I did get to play some tomboyish roles, but not many. Yeah. I think they left that to um, Quinn Cummings. (laughs) God, she was great at it, though. No, she was more the sardonic, too wise for her years precocious child. Right. No, Chris McNichols was the tomboy. Oh, yeah. She certainly was. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, your first series uh, was uh, Angie. No. It was actually called Who's Watching the Kids. Oh, was that the first one? Yeah. Angie came after that. Okay. Let's start with Angie, though. Okay. So you did Angie. So you did Angie. And you worked with Donna Pascal from Saturday Night Fever. Yes. And Robert Hayes, who I met, very nice man. I love him. And uh, Doris Roberts, before she was on Everybody Loves Raymond. And Deborah Lee Scott, who was on Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. She was so great. They all were. I mean, Robert Hayes, in, in, in addition to being, like, you know, a nice guy, was also, you know, Airplane. Oh, yeah. One of the silliest, funniest films ever. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, they were all great, yeah. 
Was that a good experience? It was. I mean, it was, you know, it was a different studio system then. Uh, I had done this show for Gary Marshall that right before that, before Angie, so I was then put under contract with Paramount. So even though the series were separate and the people could have changed, and they did, it was still, I was always at Paramount. So those years, <coughs> the Paramount years, I was there for years. Just whatever show came up, ah, throw it at Tammy. You know, that type of thing. Yeah. If it was my age range. That's how the studio system used to work. Yep. So what I remember from Angie is really, I mean, and it sounds bad, but as a child, you know, what your main concerns are, like, what's at the commissary that day? Uh, like my set teacher, I'd have, you know, these bonds and these, you know, with my set teachers, uh, the other kids that were on the lot at the time, like, yeah. like Little House still in there. So all those kids were on the lot, like the Happy Days kids. So, all the, so my memories were mostly about those Paramount related things. Everybody mm -hmm. on Angie was obviously <coughs> great, but they were obviously not going to have a lot to like, you know, hang out and talk to an eight year old about. Or nine, I think it was nine. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, what are they really going to talk to me about? Like with Donna having just done Saturday Night Fever, she was horrified when she found out I saw it. <laughs> really? She was just <clears throat> horrified. No, well, that's too mature for you. <laughs> you know, but we didn't know. I mean, I was trying to, you know, my parents were trying <laughs> to show me who my co stars were. You know, Donna. You know, it was Saturday Night Fever. It was pretty mature. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's my mom's favorite movie, and her name is Donna. Oh, is it? Yeah. She, it was a great film. Yeah. She, she's she been wanting I, to be you know. she's been wanting to be Mrs. John Travolta since she was, like, 18 or whatever. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you know, and I've worked with John quite a few times. I mean, a few times. Yeah. And, uh, but I first met him back then when I was... When I was doing Angie, I don't, I think he was doing Urban Cowboy. Yep. He, yeah, he was. He was doing Urban Cowboy. Yeah. Yeah. That was the first time I met him. So, yeah, every woman had that fantasy that he was, ugh. <laughs> yeah. So, such a big star. I mean, you know, for me, it was Grease, but yeah, he was huge. Oh, she loves Grease, too. I mean, she used to watch it over and over again when I was a kid. But, um, yeah, I remember the first time I, I the first time I, w I went to Hollywood as an adult a couple of years ago, driving on Melrose past Paramount Studios, and I see the Groundlings Theater uh, a little bit further down, and then the Improv across from it. I'm like, I'm in Hollywood. This is my dream right here. <laughs> yeah. So, so then uh, you you so first one you did had, was uh, Who's Watching the Kids. Now, you, yes. had, you had been on an episode of Mork and Mindy. Is that how you got it? No, it was reversed. Um, Robin, actually, Robin Williams, yep. uh, was obviously doing a lot of stand-up then. And one of the things that a lot of guys that were and still do that are trying to break into stand-up do is they do warm-ups for sitcoms during their taping days. So yeah. they're taping the show, and in between takes, You've got the warm-up guy in the audience, usually a stand-up comic, to keep the audiences laughing and entertained. Robin was doing that on that show, Who's Watching the Kids? This was Jim Belushi. It was like uh, Scott Baio. It was all those people. Gary Marshall. And Gary Marshall was already wanting to do this Mark and Mindy show. He wanted to do something with Robin. Right. So after Who's Watching the Kids, was over, I went and I did an episode of Mork and Mindy, uh, primarily because uh, Robin, I already knew him, mm -hmm. uh, I guess. Yeah. Again, we're talking about a kid, so as much as a kid can get to know him, but, and, and, uh, and then that show was right before Angie. And in fact, when they aired, they aired one after the other, didn't they? I, I think, I want to say that I think so. was right after Mark and Mindy. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, don't quote me, but I think so too. 
So it's sort of like, it's, it's kind of what I mean about those paramount years. If something came up in your age range, they, they generally try to have you do it because they were paying you anyway. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, <clears throat> Jim Belushi was on the series. Right, exactly. Mm-hmm. That was his first, uh, like, series. Mm-hmm. What was he like? Well, you know, John Belushi was still alive then. Yep. So I would say he was, I don't know, um, he's a, he was a great guy, obviously very down to earth, but it, it, it was sort of a large uh, thing, you know. I mean, John was doing, John Belushi had done <laughs> Animal House. He was huge. Yeah. And Jim, I, I, I don't know, as a child, there was certain, he just seemed more nervous to me than most adults I was used to working with at that point. Yeah. You know, like Scott Baio had done a lot of this, so he was very relaxed. Everybody on the show was pretty relaxed, but Jim was pretty nervous, and I don't know. I, I think he had a lot of pressure on him. Yeah. As funny as John. Because he was, he was living in his brother's shadow at that time. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it, it, it took him a while. I think he, I yeah. think, I think he fully got appreciated after his brother died, which is sad to say, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and even that was hard for him too. Yeah. Mhm. So, yeah, it was. It was. Um, it was very. Uh, it was a very different time, you know, and and obviously people's careers have changed so much. But then, yeah, he was living under, I would say, John Belushi a little bit. Yeah, a lot of pressure there. Mhm. And then, and then you did Out of the Blue with Jimmy Brogan, who's an underrated yes. underrated comedian. I believe so, too. Yeah, he, he still opens for Jay Leno every Sunday night at the Comedy and Magic Castle or uh, Magic Club in um, Hermosa Beach. Oh, I know. You know, we're friends on Facebook. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll PM each other. Oh, no, yeah, I'm, I'm still friends with Jimmy. You can't not be friends with Jimmy. <laughs> He's amazing. He's very funny. Yeah, he's a very funny guy. And, uh, you know, he played him on Mark and Mindy, so that was kind of a spinoff. Yes, yes. And you got to work with Dixie Carter. What was she like? She was, well, I mean, she was funny in that dry way. Um, You know, Dixie Carter had a very dry sense of humor. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I just remember mostly being fascinated because the way you read it was not the way Dixie would say it. Does that make sense? Yeah. You read it in your script and you'd imagine that she would probably say it, but she always managed to do something just a little bit different, what you weren't expecting. I think Dixie was a really, really talented comedic actress. Mm -hmm. She sure proved that when she was on Designing Women. And Clark, exactly. Br- Clark Brandon, whatever happened to that guy? Oh, we're friends on Facebook too. Um, let's see. Um, well, he was he went through the teen heartthrob thing. Yep. Which is super difficult, you know, for a lot of people to bounce back from. Mm-hmm, yeah. Because uh, you, you're sort of I don't know how to describe it, but I feel if you get kind of locked into that, it can be difficult to sort of break out of a, you know, this very strong preconceived notion of who you are. Yeah. Like Leif Garrett, look at him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The exact same thing. You know, huge sense, but, you know, and it's difficult. Yeah, I mean, even when it, even when he lost his hair, it didn't make any much difference. <laughs> yeah. You know? But yeah, I remember Clark Brandon. He 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 wrote a he wrote and starred in a movie called Fast Food in the late '80s, and that's like probably one of the last big things he did. Right. And of course, I think he yeah yeah go ahead. And and, and of course, Livia uh, Barash. She was in the classic Repo Man. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, Olivia was. We were probably the closest in age, or mm. maybe I just thought that she was the closest girl my age. So I liked working with Olivia because it was it was nice to have. I like doing out of the blue in general. It was nice to have kids on the show with me. Mm-hmm. Which I wasn't the only kid. I like that better. Do you think the show had a spiritual message to it? 
God, I don't think so. Um, it was more just wholesome messages. <laughs> I wouldn't say it was spiritual, <laughs> but I would say that they were definitely shooting for a wholesome family show. Yeah. And then you you got to do a um, Disney adventure movie called The Flight of Noah's Ark. Right. What was what was that experience like? It seems like doing a, a pirate movie would be kind of of uh, torturous. <laughs> it would be what? It would be kind of torturous because you know you're you're just working all the time doing a movie on a ship. Yeah, it was it was. A lot of fun, though, because we were in Hawaii, mm -hmm. you know, for months, mm -hmm. you know, so that, you know, doesn't suck. And, you know, it was, <laughs> and Ricky and I, you know, we, I, we're still affectionate with each other because of that. I mean, it was, he had just done the champ and we were, you know, little kids on Hawaii, you know, the, the, the biggest excitement of our day was when they'd open up a coconut or something on set. Yeah, you know, it's kids, and you know, and white. The big thing about that is the director of that movie. I worked with him again years later, um, but he actually ended up marrying my mother. <laughs> really? <laughs> so, there you go. There you go. Yep. So he's your stepdad. Hmm? So he's your no, stepdad. They married when I was older, so he's just—he's just the dude that married my mother. Okay, so he became your stepdad later. No, no, he never became my stepdad. They they got married when I was already an adult. I was already well out of the house. But the, but it, but it doesn't count as your stepdad. No, I don't think so. Uh, I think that's like if they're kids, you know. It's I, I mean that's how I see it. I don't know. That's how I always refer to him. Oh. Because I refer, I refer to my dad's wife as my stepmom. They got married, I think, when I was 18. And I've known her since I was 14. So. Gotcha. Yeah. And that's, that's Charles Jarrett, right? Yes. Yeah. And uh, working with Elliot Gould was fun. And I'm sorry, Elliot Gould was the what? Working with Elliot Gould was fun. Oh, Elliot is the best. He was always, I mean, he's, he's just a great guy. He, and he likes kids, and he likes being silly, and he likes, uh, I don't know, I just imagine him to probably be, you know, a fun dad to have. Yeah. But he was definitely very uh, playful and, and, and good with us, you know, when we were kids. So oh. I liked Elliot a lot. Well, that's... Yeah, I was more, um, you know, uh, reserved, I think, because um, this was sort of, well, first of all, you know, she was, um, I can't remember where she was from. She always had that amazing French dialect. You know, that's, <laughs> <laughs> she was, you know, very popular as well at the time. Um, she was just more reserved. Oh, Genevieve. She did have a son my age, but she was just more reserved. Ge yeah, Genevieve Bold, I can't Jean pronounce. Bejeul. Yeah. I can't pronounce her last name. <laughs> okay. And, and then you did, I, I used to watch this movie a lot when I was a kid, The, the Kid with the Broken Halo. You, like you watched it on purpose? Really? Well, I used to see it, okay, TBS Superstation used to have this like weekend movie block where they would show uh -huh. a, a couple of movies from somebody. And they would like have a right. Gary Gary Coleman uh, day where they would show like Jimmy the Kid and the the boy from Left Field, and then they would show the kid with the broken halo. Right. Yeah, I used to see it. Right. That was that was yeah that was with Keith Coogan. Yep. Um. Oh God, there were a lot. Well, there were a lot of actors. In it. Yeah, but Gary Coleman. Yeah, sure. Mhm. Mm and you worked with him again later on Playing with Fire. I did. I was his girlfriend in playing with fire. Mm -hmm. Did you did you ever get to see any of those famous uh, diva qualities he had? <laughs> um, you know, um, it's hard to. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I don't know if I would have described him 
as a diva. I, I think it's just he was always, you know, kind of, he had severe health problems. That was always. Oh, yeah. And he was just sort of, um, you know, this in this body that was never really going to grow up right. It was never, he was, you know, it was the, you felt like uh, he felt trapped by, by his character on different strokes. Yeah. And by his his body and his health, mm-hmm. and so yeah, he you know he would definitely. I don't. I mean, most of us when we're not feeling well, we can get bitchy. Yeah. And snappy. Yeah, I would say it was more like that. I think it was kind of famous, but I don't think people were really putting it in full context. Yeah. You know, I just think he felt like shit most of the time, and yeah, he could get bitchy, but he was still very sweet. Mm-hmm. Um, I I don't think he was an asshole. I just think that all of us can be a little assholeish when we're not physically doing well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think he was prepared for the for the fame that he got, you know. And yeah, that was that too. I, I do believe that that he he was he was very sweet though. I could just just tell in 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 his performances that he really was. You know? Oh yeah, yeah he had a good heart. I believe that, yeah. And you got to work with the legendary Leslie Martinson, who directed it. <laughs> okay, yeah, I did. He's legendary because he directed episodes of Batman and, and the first Batman movie, and he directed PT-109 with Cliff Robertson. And I, 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 heard, I heard, oh, he, he, can, he can be pretty tough to work with. No, I mean, I don't remember that. Uh, no, I don't remember him being that bad. But again, I was a kid. Who's going <laughs> to yell at a kid? You're such an asshole if you just yell at a kid. So, you know, when these things that you're bringing up were things, you know, that I was really young. And yeah. I'm, I'm sure that even if people were usually assholes, they could probably pull it together in front <laughs> of the kid, you know. Yeah. Don't worry, I'm almost out of the kid rules. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to bring up, though, you did the pilot for Little Darlings. Yeah. Yeah, you got to work with Pamela Adlon, who I think is hilarious with that voice of hers. I mean, she could really make a wisecrack with that voice. Right, right. Yeah. Did, were you Were you disappointed that the pilot didn't get sold? Sorry? Were you dis- pilot that, yeah, they did never sell it. It was actually, I think, I don't even think it was a, I don't even know if they aired it. It was more of like a presentation for the network, mm-hmm. but it didn't get picked up. Yeah, that's sad, because I, I love the movie, and I'm sure the series would have been pretty good. It was, I mean, in <clears> all <throat> honesty, it was, the, the reason the movie was good is because they were sort of tackling those teenage type of things, but when they did it as a series, they tried to clean it up and make it very wholesome again, and the concept didn't work as well like that. Yeah. So, in all reality, I, I kind of understand why they decided that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell Pamela that. <laughs> no, I, I actually think she would agree. I, I actually don't even think she'd be upset. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if I ever if I ever do get to interview her, I'll be certainly lucky because I am a fan of hers. Yeah, yeah, she's great. And then you did uh, the best times with Leanne Curtis, who I've had on the show. I love her; she's so funny and so dirty. I yes. love her. Yes, exactly. And you got to work with uh, Melora Hardin, also. I've been trying to get an interview with her. Yeah. Yeah, why do you why do you think you did so many series that failed? God, I don't know. I mean, you know, back then too, we had fewer networks, so it wasn't you know just getting a show to get a pickup order was sort of a big deal, <laughs> and not many of them made it. So I guess bad luck, maybe. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, three networks. Wow, I, I kind of I kind of miss the three network thing because I just there's so much oversaturation, so much good stuff doesn't get to be seen no more. Right. You know. Yeah. And then you did the Stepford Children. 
had had you yeah. had you seen the original? Um, yeah, I but only after I finished filming. Oh, you didn't then see it. Then I read it, the original. Yeah. You didn't see it before. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. You know, because it was. Uh, I think I was. I was working a lot during that time. So mm-hmm. There were a lot of things that I was doing, like back to back, and on yeah. that one. It, it, I, you know, from the script, you could pretty much get the feel for it, but they were also making it clear that they were, you know, this was, you know, new cast. They wanted <clears throat> to make it more modern and all that. So, you know, it didn't, I didn't want to get anything stuck in my head either. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I thought the remake. No, I just did it. Yeah. I, I thought the remake stunk on ice, but it had a few good moments in it. Few funny moments. I didn't see the remake. That's the one with Nicole Kidman, right? Yeah, it wasn't that great. But there's a couple funny uh, moments. Mm. The, did you get Did you get to see Barbara Eden's belly button? Did I? Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> um, I, you know, I'm not sure. I actually did. Barbara, you know, because if you, have you met her? Have you met Barbara Eden? No, I want to though. Yeah. Okay, so Barbara has the driest, most just, I mean, it'll smack you across the face. She's so witty. She's got one-liners. She's got, I mean, she is really funny and sarcastic in a funny way and, you know, just really intensely, like, uh, her mind is always going. Yeah. So I'm not sure anybody would have the balls to ask Barbara to see her belly button. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure a lot of the guys on the set would have liked to, mm-hmm. but I don't think anybody would have the balls to ask for that. Yeah. Certainly not me. Oh, not me. No. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm a belly button fanatic, but I, even I would never ask her that. I wouldn't. No. I think it's no. disrespectful. If she wants to, if she wants to talk about it with me, that's one thing. But I won't ask to see it, you know. Oh, that's gonna be a tough conversation to bring up. Oh, hey, Tommy, it's nice to meet you. By the way, I just wanted to know: do you want to talk about my belly button? Because I've got some thoughts on it. <laughs> oh no! If I dream of Jamie, they caught that with the right panache that my belly button deserves. <laughs> oh man, Barbara was yummy. She's beautiful. She's still beautiful. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, she's just, you know, yeah. in every way. But also that wit, so she'll get it, you know. Yeah, I was... don't in... want to get into a battle of the wills with Barbara. Yeah, I, I was involved with a girl for a little bit, bit who looked like her. Beautiful. Yeah, and this and it was also one of James Coco's last roles. And Don Murray, he was a stud when he was young. Oh, he was a stud then, too. Don <laughs> Murray was a stud. Yeah. Oh, my God. He was so sweet, too. Oh, I sat across the room. <laughs> did you tell him that? Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know if I did, <clears throat> but, I would, but I was flirt enough with it. I'm sure he picked up on it, you know. That I was just, you know, so delighted he was playing my father. Mm-hmm. Wow. And then uh, you did a classic horror TV movie of the week called I Saw What You Did. Oh, yeah, with the Carradine Brothers. Is it a classic? Oh, yeah. Oh. I love that That's one. That's Shawnee. Shawnee and I did two things together, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I interviewed David Carradine's daughter, Callista. She's just like him, very articulate, but also very eccentric. Mm-hmm. And I met Robert Carradine at a horror convention last year. Sweet man. Yes. As a matter of fact. Yes. Funny, too. Yeah. Yeah, he was re- he was really funny. And, and Callista told me um, he's her favorite uncle, and they hang out a lot the most. Mm. Funny. Yeah. That makes sense, though. Did you like working on that one? I did. We had a lot of fun doing that. Fred Walton, who directed uh, When a Stranger Calls and April Fool's yep. Day. Yeah, one of yep. the 
one of the most underrated horror directors, I think. I think he's great, too. Yeah, I do, too. He was, uh, and he's also very eccentric. Mm-hmm. Probably why his stuff has the kind of feel that it does. Yeah. I have to agree, he's very idiosyncratic. It, um, then you did The People Across the Lake. Right. <clears throat> Valerie Harper. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What was she like? Oh, my God. Like, I mean, okay. <sighs> kind of like, um, okay, I, oh, there's a big truck passing. <laughs> okay. Here's what she was like. Mm-hmm. Like, like she was making fun of all the characters that she had ever done, like right in front of you. It, it, almost for you. Uh, it would always keep people entertained. She was just so funny all the time. So it would be really quiet on the set because we'd be waiting for something, and she would just break out into another one of her characters. That's what Valerie Harper was like. She was just one of a kind. There's nobody, there was, she was, Kind of like Rhoda, but not. But, but but she could be that funny, that that sarcastic. But she could also, you know, she was just really like a mom. You know, like she, yeah. was, just, she was maternal with everyone. Yeah, she was like a mother to everybody. Is what you're trying to say? Yeah. That's great. And did, do you remember when you were on the Hitchhiker? The Hitchhiker. Yeah, I went to Paris. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I remember <clears throat> that? Yeah. Yeah, it's my favorite horror anthology show. I, I, I prefer the ones from HBO because they cleaned it up on USA Network and they hired all these French-Canadian actors to work on it. And, like, I didn't see any big stars on there except for you and maybe a couple others that I can't think of right now and stuff. But Ray Sharkey. Ray Sharkey, yeah. Did you have fun uh, doing that? Well, yeah, I was in Paris. Was it your first then, trip? You know, mm-hmm. by this point, I was like, I think I was 19 or something, so I could even have liquor, you know. Yeah. That was fantastic. Was, it was your first trip to Paris? It was. It was, it, well, no, I got gone to Canada. <laughs> you like, yeah, I had very lived, yeah. I'd been to Canada, but that was, besides Canada, my first time ever out of the country. And my first time traveling alone. Usually before that, if I had gone anywhere, my parents came with me. Right. So that was the first time where I was sort of off in a foreign country by myself. So it was very liberating. It was. It was beautiful. Nice, nice. You did, you did a short-lived series called Homefront, and you worked with uh, an actress I admire very much named Sammy Davis. Uh, yes. Do you like working with her? Oh, I did. We actually were, we had a rivalry for the first season, the second season. No, we had a rivalry the second season, too. Yeah. Um, on the show. Like on the our show. Characters. Yeah. We used, our characters were usually rivals. And so that was fun. We, we, Basically, every time we had scenes together, it was just to argue. Yeah. So it was fantastic. Um, yeah, she's, she's a photographer now, I believe. Yeah. But, yeah. I, yeah, I, I, hope I, get, I hope I get to interview her someday. There's this TV movie she did called The Perfect Bride, and there's a scene she has. I tell every aspiring actor to watch it because it's so good. She pretends to be a nurse, and she, like, bends the breathing tube of this victim of hers that she hit with a car, you know? And she is so scary and cold and bloodless and sociopathic in this scene. Like, it, it's, it's bone-chilling, and the acting is so good. You wonder how she knows this character so well. I mean, you, you just think to yourself. Well, she's actually, I mean, the funny thing is she's very silly. <laughs> really? She's, like, the sweetest person. <laughs> She's very, very, you know, sensitive to what's going on around her, what people are going through. She's just very sweet, so that's funny. But yeah, she usually plays bitchy characters. <laughs> well, well, after after she 
after she kill well after she kills her she does this kind of this kind of dry smirk on her face like she thoroughly enjoyed it you know so after you told me that I'm sure she probably broke character and made a joke after it was over you know or just giggled I mean she yeah just, you know she's a, she has a very silly you know sense of humor she's she's just incredibly sweet and adorable too oh that's tiny so, and adorable that's so great to hear. And it, you you got a small part in Radio Land Murders. Yeah. In the mood band leader. <laughs> the what? The, you're the in the mood band leader. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's a George Lucas production, right? Right. Mm-hmm. What was that like? Were you all starstruck? Um. No. You know the the way we filmed that was just that. Basically, it was very rare that that the acts that were up on stage, because that's what we were doing. There were, like, all these people that were doing, like, the various acts that were going on while the movie is going on, right? Because yeah. it all happens during this radio show. So right. uh, the acts that were there to film the individual acts, we, we didn't have hardly any contact with each other. Mm -hmm. I saw more of Bobcat Goldwaite than I did anybody else on the show. Oh, you're so lucky. He's my hero. <laughs> he, he's funny. He's the guy who made me want to become a stand-up comedian when I was three years old. I mean, I <laughs> used to quote his stuff and imitate him around the house because I love the Police Academy movies. I mean, he's my hero. No, he's great. Yeah, I've, I've, I've asked quite a few people who have worked with him, and they all say... He's a nice guy and really funny. He's always, like, performing, even when the cameras are not rolling. Yeah, he's and really down to earth, too, though. If you just want to have, like, a, you know, normal conversation, he was down for that, too. Yeah. Oh, back in those days, when he had when he was playing that character with that voice, he couldn't wait to stop doing that voice <laughs> when the cameras weren't rolling. <laughs> he got tired of it after a while. But did you did you get to meet uh, George Lucas? Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. I did. Um, yeah, it briefly, it, you have to understand um, that one was like there were so many people in it. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> like yeah, so many people in it. George Burns is and, in it. <laughs> uh, huh? George Burns is in it. <laughs> Yeah. So nobody, and George is very reclusive. He would actually, he had uh, cameras then, because we were filming in North Carolina yeah. stage, you know, to, to view the stage. And it would be, uh, so it was hooked up to where he was in Northern California. He was living in California then. And he would watch it on a live feed. He was doing this then. Mm-hmm. So that he could be there and watch all the things that were happening in case he had notes um, without having to actually physically be there. Nice. Yeah, I, I'd be shaking in my boots if I met George Lucas because the man is such an icon, you know? Yeah, but I mean, yeah, but at the same time, Certain people, and he would be one of them, are so unassuming and kind of shy themselves that yeah. it, you, it that goes away real quick. Yeah, I, I mean, I've I've been lucky with all the people I've met at conventions. I've I've met some pretty nice people. There are some that I've been absolutely starstruck by, but I'm such a good actor, like I can pretend to, to not be. You know what I mean? Well, that's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, they probably like it. I mean, look, I mean, stars get starstruck by different stars. I mean, everybody's got their list of people that, you know, they have a higher regard for for one reason or another. So, I mean, that's everybody. But mm -hmm. some people are so down to earth and, and normal that even if you were starstruck, you probably wouldn't be for long around them. Yeah. Yeah, certain people, like, I, I meet them again, and I was really comfortable with them, you know. 
especially when I interviewed yeah. them and stuff. Yeah. And yeah, then, they put you at ease. Some people have that gift. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and then the classic Wishmaster comes into play. How did, how did that role come to you? Um, uh, I, I don't know what I've been doing. A lot of TV. Right. And, uh, but I had done, no, but I, I got that at the same time I got Mad City. Uh-huh. Uh, I got two films, uh, and they were going back to back. Wishmaster sort of came up. Um, they put out, you know, they put out a casting call for that role. My agents put me up for it. Uh, Bob was like, uh, the most nervous like, first-time director ever. <laughs> <laughs> and he was, you know, but he was a huge deal in special effects, so it's not like he was, you know, he just showed up out of nowhere. And, you know, Peter, the guy, it, all these people that were involved, you know, he wanted to do something <clears throat> that was more uh, classic horror. Right. So this was back in late 90s, so classic horror to Bob meant, like, what, 70s, 80s? Yeah. I think that was his idea of classic horror. So he was really going for, he wanted gore, he wanted jump shot, he wanted everything that was classic horror. <clears throat> and uh, I, for whatever reason, that I, I'm i not sure. I mean, I know he liked that I was kind of tomboyish. Yeah. So maybe that worked in my, in my favor then. But for whatever reason, I fit his concept of what that looked like. That's basically it. Bob, Bob's the reason I got it. Nice. Yeah, I, I go to horror conventions quite frequently. I have the last two years. The only one I've met in the movie is Kane Hodder. And, yeah, Kane. Oh, my God. So I'm getting an autograph from the, the first guy who played Jason, um, Ari Lehman, and he's signing my DVD cover, and Kane comes up and pinches his elbow, and he smears the L across the, my, my cover, right? <laughs> and I'm like... Okay, Kane Hodder's got a very long line, and I'm like, if I meet him, if I don't get to meet him this weekend, I'm going to count that as his autograph. <laughs> but then I did, I did meet him two days later, the last day, and he was so much fun and such a nice guy. Yeah, he's great. I, I tried yeah, to meet. Yeah, we had we had horror icons in Wishmaster, true icons. Yes, I, I tried to meet Robert England that weekend, but his line was out the door, and. Yeah, he was charging a, a lot more money for an autograph and a picture than I would I, I could spend that weekend. I'm going to try to meet him at this one Comic Con next month, though, that he's coming in Sacramento. Um, I tried. Oh, to, that's great. I tried to meet. I love t- Robert. Yeah, he's a very nice guy, and we had the same birthday, June sixth. That's funny. I tried to meet Tony Todd that weekend, but his line was out the door. And I, I, I almost went to this one con last month to eat Andrew Divoff, and I didn't get to go to that. Uh, Ted Raimi was at this one con. I didn't, I didn't get to meet him at. And then Angus Grimm died before I could meet him. Mm. Did you like working yeah. with? Did you like working with Jack Lemmon's son, Chris? Yeah, I did. I like working with everybody in Wishmaster. I mean, mm-hmm. Ted, all the people you just mentioned, Andy, Ted. Kane, Robert, all of them, Tony, Todd, Candyman, all of them. It was, it was the guys that, first of all, because they were all icons, I mean, he, the, the Peter, um, um, the, our screenwriter, why is his last name? Uh, for Wishmaster. Let me look what it up here. Last name? Let me look it up here. Uh, oh, Peter Atkins. Yeah, it's Atkins, right. Yes. It, it, he was also, everybody was sort of like, uh, this wasn't their first rodeo. I mean, it was no. Bob's first time directing, but it wasn't their first rodeo. So they were all laid back and super chill <laughs> yeah. and super relaxed about everything. They were not worried. And uh, it just, it was a, it was a, more fun set, I guess, because of that, because there was, it was, it was just everybody, you know, there were a lot of relationships that we already knew each other, mm-hmm. you know, there was a lot of history. So, no, they were all great. Wishmaster was a fun project to do. Yeah. 
it's a great movie too because it's got a little spin on you know the genie granting three wishes, but they're going to be deadly. You know, right? What, what was it like working with John Biner? He's a comedy legend. That guy. Uh, let me think. Which 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 one is he? Tell me. He pl- me look. He plays Doug Clegg. Wondering if I actually did any scenes with him. I haven't seen the movie in a long Mm -hmm. time. I can't remember. Let me go look. I'm going to have to see a visual. He's a short guy. If you ever tell him that I said that, I'm going (laughs) to lie to your face. (laughs) Okay, yes, yes, yes. Okay, so I didn't actually get to work with him, mm-hmm. which is why I didn't remember, see? Uh, but, yes, so I, he did this stuff where he brings the stone into the into the jeweler, uh, to the appraisal office. Right. right. He's very funny. I didn't get to work with him. Yeah. And that's saying something, because I got to work with most everybody there. I didn't get to work with Kane either. Yeah. I know Kane more from conventions than I do from the actual film. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's funny. John Biner got casted because he uh, he was a celebrity impersonator on the Ed Sullivan Show back in the '60s, and he's a really funny guy. Yeah, funny. So, are you at your most comfortable when you do television? Um, no, because that's not it's um television or film. It's more like the differences are more like. TV or film or, like, stage. There's not a lot different between doing TV or film. hmm You do a lot of theater? Um, not anymore. I haven't for a long time. But when I did, that was basically the kind of what I started in, mm-hmm. which is, you know, kind of funny. Because I ended up on a sitcom right after that where all those, all those habits got thrown out for, you know, sitcom habits. <laughs> Those days. basically, you know, holding appropriately for the laugh. Well, nothing wrong with that. You know, you, you, you go where the work is and you excel in it, and you certainly excelled in that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> do you. Do you have any upcoming projects you'd like to plug? No, I, you know, I went into tech. Um, so I have a tech company. We're just opening a production arm, but it's more geared towards so we're doing a lot of digital distribution coming up, and I'm trying mm-hmm. to. We're also trying to incorporate cryptocurrency as a funding leverage for young filmmakers. Right. That's good. I mean, what made you um, decide that you were going to get into that field? Um, you know, I um, I think that it's great. You know, one of the great things about being a child actor is, you know, you, you've got to see a lot more than most people that age do. One of the bad things is, is that you don't really explore other interests. The entertainment industry can kind of take over your life. Right. So sometimes that's great. If you're working a lot, that can be fine. But, you know, if you have other passions or you have other things you want to do, sometimes you have to kind of make a clean break for a while to do them. Otherwise, it gets very difficult because... It's a relentless kind of thing. Right. Do you have any uh, convention appearances coming up? Not, no, I don't think I do. Not anything, anytime, even remotely soon, no. Well, if you do, I if you're in California, I'll, I'll certainly try to make it because... Well, that's great. Because I've loved talking to you. You're not only a sweet lady, but you're a true tomboy if ever there was one. Thank you. <laughs> I, I've been hanging out with tomboys my whole life. Like, all my friends growing up were girls, and they still are. And because I spent a lot of time with my mom, my grandma, and my, my female cousins growing up. So, like, I get along better with women than I do with guys, you know? That's funny. That's yeah. funny. Yeah. And, and you're one of the few child actors that didn't get fucked up like so many of them did. Oh, well, now give it a minute. You know, I mean, you gotta, no, I, yeah, I mean, we're all a little bit, 
fucked up. I, you know, some kind of fucked up, you know, can still turn out okay. I, you know, it's tough. I yeah. think child actors have a tough thing because it's weird to come down off something like that. And then you got to make a transition. You're basically talking about starting a brand new career. Right. You know, it's tough. I, I think this, the key thing to, to having a child, uh, having your own child be an actor is just be around the entire time and give them attention. That's all they need. You know? Yeah. It, it, it's, it's, uh, it's competitive. Uh, so it's, it's, I would, if, if I could add on to that, I'd say that you probably want to stress uh, other strengths they have besides just acting or whatever yeah. else they're interested in doing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, play up their other strengths as well. It's a very competitive industry, and of that course. can take a toll on anybody. Of course. But what, what, I mean, what I mean to say, though, is like, you know, when they do get the work, you know, just, you know, it's one thing to be a working parent, but if you're a parent, if, you, if there's one parent that doesn't have a job, that parent should be on the set with them and be around them 24-7 and not let any adults be alone with them. You know what I mean? Oh, right. Well, yeah. Yeah. I think that's the, the, the one key to being a successful child actor who doesn't grow up to be completely fucked up, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and it gets difficult because... When they're teens, just like regular teens, you know, they don't want to necessarily be with their parents 24-7, right? So wow. in a lot of the child actor stories where things went bad, that was about the years that it started happening. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, they want to do what most teenagers want. They want to go out with their friends. They want to do stuff. So right. it gets harder to know, I would think, I, I don't have kids, I don't have kids in the industry, but I would guess that the hardest part is, as a parent, knowing when to let go and in what way. Yeah, I don't have any kids either. I think you and I are the smartest people in the room right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, they seem great, but, you know, that just wasn't in the cards for me. Yeah, I want to wait till I'm successful in this business before I think about kids because I have enough stress already. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, kids are definitely stressful from what I hear. So, yeah, get on you for that. Yeah. So, so thank you so much, Tammy. I hope you have a happy Mother's Day. Thank you, and uh, to your mom as well. And I had a good time. This was fun. Oh, I didn't yes. realize how much shit I had done. <laughs> yep, yeah, I'm, I'm an aficionado. Um, can I add you as a friend on Facebook? Sure. Awesome. If you haven't done that? Yeah, go ahead and do that. No, I was just following, so I'll, I'll send you. Oh. Send it to me. I'll approve you. Awesome. You have yourself a great night. You too, Tommy. Thanks a lot. I'll talk to you soon. My pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, there you have it, Tammy Lauren. Ain't she a sweetheart? Thank you so much, Tammy. That was a really fun interview. Talk a little bit about people you worked with in the industry and all that stuff throughout your childhood to adulthood. Um, if you like this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Add me as a friend on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter and all that fun stuff. Enjoy my Tommy Kovac comedian page. Well, that's all the time we have this week on Splat from the Past. Until next time, this is Tommy Throwback Kovac saying, there's no shame in living in the past because the present sucks. Later, dudes.